We have a three mile hike to get to an incredible spot that Colton and I discovered at the beginning of this dry season. We found an amazing taper jaw along with another diverse set of Ice Age fossils. And we haven't been back there yet. This will be the first time that we do. So Colton, the madman that he is, is carrying a whole scuba tank out here. Mind you, this is a three mile hike through the middle of nowhere in these woods. But he's really hopeful to find some nice Ice Age fossils. So am I, I'll be doing my normal free diving thing. The hole is about nine feet deep. So I'll definitely get some exercise today. But we are excited you guys are here with us today to find this amazing pieces of history. So stay tuned as we get to the river and bring you guys some awesome fossils. I already saw my first gator just jumped in over there. Shouldn't be a problem though. Let's do this. Got it. Got it. Yep. This section of river is really unique in that the, the Ice Age fossils here are really recent. They come from a mixture of a peat layer and a clay layer. And it's probably only 11 to 50,000 years old. Some of the other sites I go to, the fossils from the Ice Age are between 100,000 and one and a half million years. So they're not as fossilized here, but they are incredibly well preserved because they're more recent. So we're excited to hopefully find some of that. Boy Colton over here is trying not to die. <laughs> All right, making Jonathan do a little bit of the, the work here. Talking about me? <laughs> no. So we've been hiking for a little bit and I love seeing stuff like this. So these are frog eggs. Each one of these little eggs belongs to a tadpole. And the water level is pretty low, that's why we're hunting out today. But these eggs aren't forsaken yet, they're not dead. When water levels come back higher, they'll get washed back into the middle of this bog and they should be all right. They have moisture trapped, like a yolk, and they should be able to survive like this out of water for a while. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do though, is I'm gonna get these eggs and I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the water because they're right in direct sunlight. And hopefully they will be able to survive because of that. So got them right here. Let's bring you over here. There you go, guys. And now they should just be fine now. All right, let's get back to it. We've been hiking for about an hour and 15 minutes now. We've been switching the tank on and off. We came to the realization that it's nearly impossible to do it by ourselves. So we're gonna just share the burden and then we'll take turns using it when we get to the taper hole. So we still got a, probably another hour of hiking and making sure we stay well and good in shape. This lifestyle of fossil hunting, through it, you really have to learn how to orientate yourself and navigate. So a lot of this trip, we've actually been going straight to the woods, but we use certain monikers to be able to guide us. The first and most obvious is you never want to go against the direction of flow. So right now, we're walking with the river, and even though the river bends, like it goes back over to the right up here, we know that if we stay to the left of it, and if we keep track about which direction the water is flowing, there should be no way to ever get lost. Now, when we go through the woods itself, there's certain ways in which you can tell how the water flows. For example, this oxbow lake, you've got a lead coming in right here, and you'll be able to tell kind of what direction the water's coming from and know that you're close to the river. So we use that as well to navigate ourselves. I have only gotten lost once, and I had to wait until the sun went down and I was able to orientate myself with the direction the sun was facing. Because rise in the east, sets in the west. I knew the sun was west, and I just followed the sun until I got out of the woods. But it's beautiful to be able to come out here. You learn a lot by doing this. And it is so incredibly rewarding. We made it to the taper hole. Colton's getting ready over here. This is where we're gonna be spending the next four to five hours. And we've got this crazy abandoned home right here. Might be a cool hideout spot, a camping spot in the future. 
But we're pretty hopeful. We have honestly no idea what we're gonna find in the next couple hours. But it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So we have a tragic scenario here. It seems that on my last fossil hunt, a little bit of water leaked into my GoPro and shorted it. So we're not gonna be able to do any underwater footage today, but we'll get stuff on the bank to show you what's in spots like this. I'll have to talk to GoPro and see if they can't get me a new one. They're a pretty awesome company, so I bet they'll just go ahead and replace it, but means that we'll have to figure this out today. We'll make it work. So it begins. We're gonna get in the water, grab some fossils, and then we'll put them over here on the bank and show you guys the stuff we pull out of this hole over the course of the day. All right guys, so we've been hunting for about an hour now and we've already got fossils from seven different extinct species that used to be in Florida. So up here we've got two osteoderms, armored plates. This one's from a glyptodon, which was a giant armadillo about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Next to it we've got one from an actual giant armadillo, which was about medium sized, by medium sized I mean 200 pound armadillo. We've got an incredible camel tooth right here. Beautiful, great wear, no roots though, but that's a great example of the extinct camel. We've got something really cool, and this one's a beautiful example. Colton found this while diving. That is a giant beaver tooth. So we used to have bear-sized beavers in Florida. It's pretty awesome. We've got our extinct horse teeth. This one's an incisor. And this one right here is a molar. It's an extinct horse molar. And then we've got our extinct giant tortoise fossils up here. One, two, three spurs, and then a claw. So this big bone is a giant tortoise claw. We used to have tortoises in Florida that were as large as the Galapagos Island tortoises that are still extant today. And then some remnants of some mastodon fossils. So we've got chunks of enamel and then this chunk of ivory, mastodon ivory. So really cool spot. Oops. We're really hoping to find more. We've got a lot more hunting to do. It's about 1 p.m. Let's get to it. It really is a gorgeous day to be out on the river doing this. I'm about to go back in the spot where I was standing for some fossils. Once we find some more, which we're sure to do, bring it right back here and show you guys what we have to find. Jonathan's coming up out of the water with a bunch of stuff he said. I was having, woo, almost fell. <laughs> I was having a blast over here. So we've got multiple different species. We've got our first taper tooth for today. This beautiful lower jaw molar with little wear. One of the best camel teeth I have ever seen. The fully rooted adult tooth. That's an insane piece of history. We've got a camel, I'm pretty sure it's camel incisor which is a really weird looking tooth. There's the occlusal chewing surface. And then that's the root, that wood looking thing. And a canine. Probably bobcat. Not sure the chip, the tip is chipped off, but I'll need to get that one ID'd. If you guys think you know for sure, please let us know and we'll follow up with it. And then a couple of shark's teeth. This awesome hemi priestess, snaggle tooth shark with great serrations and a pathology. It had some kind of malformed root and it healed right there in the corner, which is really cool. You don't often see pathologies. Awesome tooth, as well as a lower hemi. And that's a lower hemi. And so snaggle teeth have a really cool tooth dimorphism. So this is from the upper jaw and this is from the lower jaw. And so the upper jaw has evolved to slice through flesh like a steak knife, and the lower jaw has evolved to grip prey items. So these lower jaw teeth grab the flesh, grip it like a hook, and then these upper jaw teeth slice through flesh. So even though they're vastly different looking, they are from the same shark and have evolved different functions within the shark. Really cool set of teeth from one small spot. You done there, Colton? <laughs> we just wrapped up the day and I love days like this when we can find an incredible diversity of fossils. So we've got them lined up right now. 
I think my favorite from the day are these three extinct camel teeth. This one right here is an incredible example from the species. It has fully developed roots. And you don't normally find roots on these extinct fossils. A good example would be this one right here, where the roots have been long since eaten up. We have giant tortoise, be the second one we've got from an extinct animal. That is a claw, a beautiful giant tortoise claw. And then these right here, those are leg spurs. So they are fossil spurs that the uh, they, the giant tortoise would have used for protection. Along those same lines, we have giant armadillo osteoderms and glyptodon osteoderms. So osteoderms are the armored plating that animals used. Alligators also have them. So these little plates would have been joined with hundreds of other plates on the animal and it would have been used for armor. So glyptodons would have been the largest of the extinct armadillos, about the size of Volkswagen Beetle. And giant armadillos would have been, you know, just 200 to 300 pounds. We've got horse, that's a molar, and this is a horse incisor. Very similar to this camel incisor, except for the camel incisor has a well-defined root and then a chewing surface, which is a beautiful tooth. We've got our normal pieces of mastodon enamel, but no whole tooth, just a bunch of heartbreakers and some ivory. Wonderful little taper molar. I love these guys so much. If you guys have never looked up a baby taper, you should. They are the cutest animal on earth and the adults are ugly. But they belong to the family of Perissodactyls, which is rhinos, tapers, and horses. And we had plenty of extinct tapers, now extinct, that used to live in Florida. We also found this mystery canine. So if any of you guys know what this might be belong to, we would love to hear from you in the comments below. Shame about that tip, but I'm not the one that's deciding these things. And then I'm so happy that we found both an upper and lower from this species. This is Hemipriestus, the snaggletooth. So this is an upper, heavily serrated, wide, and very thin. And so the uppers are evolved to slice through flesh, while these lowers are in rare exceptions basically serrationless, and they are completely designed to pierce and hold flesh like a hook. So the lowers grip the animal and then the uppers slice through them. We've got our normal gator teeth that we often find when hunting in Florida's rivers, and then something really unique that Colton nabbed, that is a giant beaver tooth. So we had beavers that were as large as bears in the Ice Age in Florida. So that's an awesome piece of history. Overall, a great assemblage and diversity of fossils. And we really are looking forward to getting back out here. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks you so much for digging science. Take care.